Hey Bookish Babes and welcome to my book nook. For those that are new around here, the name is Franny Barton. I'm an elementary music teacher by day and I read a bunch of books like thriller and horror mainly but I've gotten a lot more into fantasy and romance and other types of genres so if you're interested in that please like and subscribe to my channel down below. It really does help my channel grow. In today's vlog we are doing a taste test of Zoya Stage, I believe that is how you say her name, and if it is not, I am so very sorry, because my friend Haley from Haley Hughes, who you should follow because she's one of my favorite booktubers ever, and I feel excited that, like, I can be a friend of hers. Anyway, she wanted to read, we both love evil children books. We loved books about evil children. I know, it's weird. I just, The Bad Seed has always been one of my favorite movies. I love The Push. It's one of my favorite books. I loved The Perfect Child. I just love evil children books. So when we were talking about that, she said there was one that she hadn't read yet called Baby Teeth and we both were like oh I would love to read that and so we're doing a joint taste test vlog however her vlog came out like a week ago because you know she got it up before she went on her um bachelorette week of fun and I just you know am pregnant and slow but it's okay I have it now. So the two books that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is Baby Teeth. So of course we're going to read the evil child one. And then her newest book that actually just came out at the beginning of this month called Mothered. And I'm not going to say what they're about right now because you're going to get explanations from me within the vlog. I was going to read three books and I think at one point I say I was going to read Getaway by Her which came in between Baby Teeth and Mothered. However, after the slog of Mothered that happened, uh, I decided I did not want to read another book right by her right now or that would surely put me into a worse reading slump than I feel coming on from this book. So we're going to skip that. So you're kind of getting a sneak peek at what I thought of this book. But I'm going to read both of these. There's going to be some b-roll in between and we're just going to be vibing and having a good time. So let's start the vlog. Hello friends. Would it be a reading vlog if I didn't have an update from my garage office in my classroom? I don't think so. So update on baby teeth. I'm currently 15% of the way through. Like I said, I'm reading this with Haley. Um, I don't know how far she got because we were at around the same percent when I had to hop off of reading sprints last night to go to circus. So I'm going to message her today and see where she's at. But I really, I'm liking this book. So it takes between, it shifts between two perspectives between Hannah, which is the child. I think she's five or six and Suzette, which is the mom. And it's your, you know, your typical evil child story. Like she's a stay at home mom trying to do everything she can for her daughter. Her daughter doesn't speak, or at least she can speak, but she won't speak. She feels like she's manipulated by her and like treated awfully by her, but like she doesn't do that around the dad. So the dad thinks the mom's crazy and the mom's not crazy. The kid is crazy, all of that stuff. What I like about this book compared to others is you never get the child's perspective. You only ever get like the mom's perspective or things and so like we're actually having like each chapter switches between the child and the mom and like the child's chapters it's like very clear like yeah she's crazy um she's crazy like she'll do stuff like this is not giving it away but like she'll do stuff like one of the things was like she was like how can I make my mom suffer today so she has to take me to this party with her and I don't have to stay with the stupid babysitter oh I can hide one of her like prized possession earrings and so she takes one of her earrings like flushes it down the toilet or something like that and the mom gets really upset still keeps her with the babysitter so then she does stuff to like bother the babysitter and like growls at the babysitter and like all this crazy stuff to like get the babysitter to never want to babysit her again and it's just stuff like that and it's really really crazy so I'm very much enjoying this I'm gonna be listening to this while I go and work on some stuff for my spring arts showcase that is happening soon so my plan is to hopefully get to like 30 percent before I have to start teaching kids and that is the plan but I would love to finish this in the next day or two so that I can move on to mothered because like I said this is a Zoji or Zoe I don't know if the J is pronounced I need to check that out uh taste test so let's see it's gonna be a big but I like it I like it. it's gonna be beautiful 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 Nice. Oh no! Aww. All right, friends. Update. I need to update before I finish this book because I'm just cruising through this book now. It's like a day later. Also, it's really bothering me that my hair is not it's not working with me. But whatever. I'm eighty percent in now, and this book is freaking crazy. Oh my goodness. So like all the evil children books I've read before, like you know, the child's been like calculated and like stuff like that but they've not been nearly as sinister as this girl and like 
I don't think this is a spoiler. Maybe it is. So if you don't want to hear this, skip forward like five seconds. But like, there's witchcraft crap in this book. And like, the girl is like seriously trying to hurt her mother. And you, her chapters are just really, really creepy. I have about 50 pages left and I am just dying to know how this book is going to end. And trust me, I will finish this book tonight. Mom, Haley has already finished and so she's waiting for me to finish so we can discuss because I have a lot of thoughts on this. And this book has not a great rating. I think it's like a 3.5 or something. People have said it's repetitive. People have said nothing goes on in it. People have said it's boring and I think that couldn't be further from the truth. Like, unless this has a very, very bad ending. I honestly see this being a five star because it is just so creepy. And I agree with half of what it says on the front. It says, we need to talk about Kevin meets Gone Girl meets The Omen. I've never read We Need to Talk About Kevin. It's on my list, but I've read Gone Girl and I've seen The Omen. So I'm going to dive right back into this, finish up these 50 pages and let you know what's going on because a girl has got to know. Like I was literally shooketh at one of these chapters in this book. Hello, from me and Lincoln. Can you say hi? Hi. You're propped up on my dash while I'm driving. If I'm looking at you right now, it's because I'm at a red light, so that's what it is. But um, I figured I would do my update from here about baby teeth because that was crazy. So I finished the book last night, and I would give it a, I gave it a four and a half stars, uh, which is actually the same rating that Haley gave hers. And we talked about it, and the reason that it didn't get a five star from me is because throughout the entire book, the girl is crazy, right? Like, you can tell, like, she's seven, and she, like, really wants to kill her mom. Like, she's insane. She just doesn't like her mom. It's always an evil girl also, which freaks me out because I'm having a little girl soon, but I'm trying not to think about that. So anyway, um, it's the whole time it's, like, ramping up and building up to, you know, like, some suspenseful, like, event that happens. And then the end comes, and it's very anticlimactic. And I feel like it just kind of fizzled. And so I still really enjoyed it. I just couldn't give it a five star. And so I am going to have a spoiler section really quick in case you're interested. So I'm going to put spoilers down below. This is your chance to click out and come back. But so basically at the end what happens is she, uh, her dad decides, her dad finally like believes the mom that like the little girl's crazy because she one day like was going to try and kill her and it stuck a bunch of thumbtacks all over the floor of the mom's room. And so when her mom stepped on all the thumbtacks, she was going to come in with a hammer and bash her in the head. Like, I kid you not, this girl's insane. And so the dad finally believes her and the little girl thinks she's some witch in the 70s I don't know that was burned at the stake and so the dad's like well why don't we get rid of your bad self the witch and have like a goodbye burning ceremony and so they're doing that and of course when the dad goes in to get something she attacks the mom burns part of her face all this other stuff and so they realize like she's way more sinister than they thought and they're talking to their counselor and they're like we're gonna have to send her to marshes which is like this three year out inpatient facility where she'll live there they'll see her a couple of times a year and when she's actually like better and on the road to recovery they'll take her back so they drop her off they don't even let her know that they're going they just leave her they don't even say bye to her and she's very upset mind you she's mute she doesn't talk to anyone except for the mom the mom is the only one she's ever talked to and she talks to her as that evil witch girl so then the end comes and like the mom and the dad are getting back into like a groove and they're getting used to being without their daughter and they're actually really enjoying themselves and then the girl is so manipulative that she calls she gets them to call the dad and she finally talks to the dad for the first time and apologizes to both of them over speaker saying i'm so sorry i was bad and like all this stuff and she's never talked to the dad before and so like the, you know that the dad is like breaking saying oh wow she's progressed so much let's bring her home the mom throws a huge fit and says no and the dad says all right and so they hang up and then the little girl decides i'm gonna hatch a plan i have to become the best girl that i've ever been so i can get out of here and finish what i started and basically come back and kill the mom it's so also her plan and while i like ambiguous endings and whatnot and i think that could have been really well done i just wasn't really here for it because like i was expecting shit to go down like in the push um which i'm not gonna spoil here but like the end was like a lot crazier just like in the bad seed there was a really crazy ending and just like in what's the other evil child book that i've read the perfect child and eh, i didn't really think that ending was that great i loved that book though it was also four and a half stars um but i feel like there should be some big dramatic thing that happens at the end and i just kind of thought this was like a little too 
like just guess for yourself what's going to happen or come from this. So that's why I didn't rate it that way. But I still really enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, I really do love a good evil child book. And honestly, this, what this one had that none of the others had is the child's perspective throughout this. So I really could appreciate that. And that's what I thought about it. So I'm going to keep driving and I will be home in a little bit. And then I need to start mothered, which all I know is that it is a COVID setting book. I don't know anything else above that. And Haley has already started it. So I need to get caught up because she is always ahead of me. And you know what? It is what it is. Ready? Here we go. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in, so I can find myself. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way, I found my way I was in the dark Okay, update on Mothered. I am now 22% into this book. I'm having to read it physically because I don't have an audiobook for it and I didn't want to spend my audible credit and I had already spent my audible credit so I just have to read it physically and so I don't think I've updated what this is about so it says it's about Grace isn't exactly thrilled when her newly widowed mother Jackie asks to move in with her they've never had a great relationship and Grace likes her space especially now that she's stuck at home during a pandemic then again she needs help with the mortgage after losing her job and maybe it'll be a good chance for them to bond or at least give each other a hand but living with mother isn't for everyone Good intentions turn bad soon after Jackie moves in. Old wounds fester, new ones open. Grace starts having nightmares about her disabled twin sister who died when they were kids. And Jackie discovers that Grace secretly catfishes people online, a hobby Jackie thinks is unforgivable. When Jackie makes an earth-shattering accusation against her, Grace sees it as an act of revenge and it sends her spiraling into a sleep-deprived madness. As the walls close in, the ghosts of Grace's past collide with a new but familiar threat. Mom. And so... All that's really happened in the first 70 pages is that Jackie the mom moved in with Grace. Apparently she was a terrible mom growing up and now she's like cooking for her and like being very hospitable and weird and like rearranging her cabinets and cleaning her house and she's not used to that. And we haven't gotten very far into the catfishing thing. I do know like she basically like has fake relationships with like a bunch of different people online and like has character profiles and all of that. So I'm wondering like when like the thrilling suspenseful part is going to come in or kick in. I'm 25% in. And I do know that at this point Haley is almost done with it. She's hating it. So that's not a great sign. But I plan on hopefully getting to the 50% mark tonight. I really do want to finish this sooner than later because I have one more book to get you in this Zoya stage. Uh, that's when I learned how to pronounce her name um, in this vlog because I'm reading three books for a taste test to see if I like her stuff but I'm not loving this nearly as much as baby teeth I don't know hello friends for me and my little kitty cat Josby update on mother it has taken me a year and forever to read this book I feel like and I'm still not done with this book like a week later I am according to Goodreads 62% of the way through I have about 100 pages left and this book is a mother freaking slog it is just a slog. I'm just not liking it. Set in the pandemic times, which is fine. There hasn't been that much pandemic-y stuff, so it hasn't been that awful. However, it's like this book is about something, but it's also about like nothing. And they've taken the unreliable narrator trope way too far. Like the main character keeps having all these terrible nightmares and dreams about her deceased twin sister who had cerebral palsy who died when she was younger and they haven't said how she died um or they say she died of pneumonia 
Anyway, she keeps having these like really crazy dreams and the dreams are sometimes when she's asleep and sometimes when she's awake. Like she'll see things like she thought she cut off her own ear at one point, but she didn't actually. And like just weird, crazy stuff like that. But it's taken to the point where you can't tell what's real and what's not. And like why and then there's like this weird side catfishing thing that's described in the cover so this is not getting it away where she catfishes other women pretending to be men so that they they realize what they deserve and they go out and find the person they should actually be with but I don't really get why the catfishing thing is a plot and it like causes her and her mom to fight and then like I just I don't really care about anything that's going on in this book if we're being honest and then you have the prologue, which was something I was really interested in. The prologue was literally about a therapist that was going to be talking to someone that had stabbed someone 91 times saying they were infected. And I assume it's going to be either Grace or the mom that that is about. But we haven't gotten to where the prologue kicks in and I have a feeling we're not going to get there until the end. All I know is this book is rated a 3.3 on Goodreads, which is not very good. So... I'm not enjoying it nearly as much as Baby Teeth. And I know I said originally I was going to read another book of hers for this taste test, but I think we're only going to read these two because honestly, I don't want to read another book by her after this. I just want to keep it as Baby Teeth was great and this is just not good. But I'm going to finish this for the sake of the vlog. So there. I'll come back to you with an update probably when I finish this. Hopefully tomorrow because I really don't want to dedicate any more time to this. Hello friends, I come to you with an update on Mother. I finished it at last. I read the last bit of it on my planning period. I had about 80 pages. My friends told me on the sprints last night to DNF. They said, Rainy, DNF, even if you're 70% in, DNF. And I couldn't do it because I had let Haley go through it and she almost DNF'd and she used her audible credit on it so she felt like she couldn't DNF. And you know, I just couldn't do that to her. I just couldn't do that to her. So I finished this book. Maybe a week late, but I finished. And it is a two star. It is a two star. This book just got crazier and crazier. And by the end, you saw where it was going. And you kind of knew where it was going the whole entire time. But it's like, I wasn't interested in it. And there was just too much having to struggle to figure out like what was real and what wasn't because like the unreliable narrator ish stuff with all of her crazy dreams and stuff it was really hard to follow along it would take me till the end of the chapter to go oh that didn't just happen and sometimes it wasn't crazy things it was like normal things and it's like that didn't just happen it was just extremely hard to follow and I was not really about it and then the end was just kind of lackluster and it just kind of ended not in a great way and I kind of hated it so honestly it's a two star it was not good and I would not recommend it and it's just crazy to think that she wrote baby teeth which I loved four and a half stars literally only not five because it kind of like fell flat at the end and then write this this pandemic centered book that she wrote during the pandemic it was not good not good so if you're gonna read a book by her baby teeth is the way to go not this. And Neva, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I know you have an arc of this. I would maybe lie and say that you read it. And that's that. Alright, thanks for watching my Zoya stage video. I hope that this was fun for you. I want to do more taste tests. Maybe you can put in the comments down below other authors that I should do a taste test of. I do have a couple down the road. Like I want to do a TJ Klune one because I've never read any of their books. I want to do a Rachel Hawkins. Or not Rachel Hawkins one. Yes. Rachel Harrison? Yes, Rachel Harrison one. I have a couple that I want to do. So let me know who I should do in the comments down below. And with that, I will see you in our next video. Bye.